Hey there, I am Jessica Fisher, the Furry Family Coach, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> the difference and preference between in-home dog training and either doing like a board and train program or actually going outside of your home to take training classes with your dog. There are pros and there are cons, and in this video, we're gonna talk about those. started, I want to remind you guys to grab a copy of Seven Miracle Steps to Get Your Dog to Obey Commands, blah, 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 Mwah. Wonderful, wonderful book. Grab your copy. I put a link in the uh, description above or below, depending on where it shows for you. Um, I put a link in the description. Get yourself a copy, Seven Miracle Steps. This book outlines my seven canine commandments, which are crucial to starting any training program with your dog. Um, I highly recommend it to anybody who has any kind of pet um, because we go over the seven canine commandments are amazing. Um, we talk about being positive, being patient, shaping your dog's behavior, um, being the protector, remaining consistent. So many wonderful things in this book. Grab your copy. The link is in the description. So I often see people posting on social media about sending their dog to like board and train programs. Um, and every single time I see somebody post about that, my heart literally sinks in my chest. And I want to talk to you guys about that. Um, and I want to talk to you about the different um, the, the different types of training programs you can go to. Um, and also some of the things you need to consider when choosing a training program. Um, because they're not all created equal. Not every dog trainer does the same thing, knows the same thing, practices the same type of training method. And I feel like so many people don't know that, don't understand that. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, let's start with, in my opinion, the worst on the list, which is a board and train program. So what happens essentially here is like, <clears throat> and I've had people ask me this, they're like, okay, um, so you do dog training, great. When can I drop off my dog to you and how long do you need them? That's essentially a board and train program where you actually take your dog somewhere, you drop them off and you let someone train your dog. In my opinion, this is the absolute worst thing that anyone can do with their dog. Um, the only exception I think might be service dog training, but most of the time I have noticed that people acquire dogs that were trained from a puppy to be service dogs for some specific need. So that might not even be like a good <laughs> example of an exception, but that is how, you know, service dogs are trained. They're um, selected as puppies, they're trained, they go through a training program with um, someone who specializes in service dog training, and then they are provided usually at a very expensive cost and a very understandably expensive cost because of all of the time and training that has gone into that dog um, to someone who needs that dog, uh, that service dog for some disability they may have. So um, a board and train program, you're basically taking your dog and you're dropping them off with someone or a company, whatever it may be, to be trained. Um, <clears throat> what I find more often than not, and I'm not saying that there aren't exceptions, I'm sure there are exceptions. However, overall, these are the reasons that I my heart sinks anytime somebody asks or sends their dog to a board and train program. Number one, you have absolutely no idea what these people are doing to your dog. Um, you have 
no idea. So I have actually seen people post, they thought they were dropping their dog off at a positive reinforcement or um, some other sort of like positive non-force. Um, they were assured that their dog would not be, um, <clears throat> that, that they would not put like a shock collar or anything like that on their dog. And their dog comes home with marks everywhere because there was a shock collar put on their dog. You have absolutely no idea what they're doing to your dog and you're dropping them off for typically around two weeks, sometimes less, sometimes more. Sometimes, you know, they can get a dog. You have no idea what they're doing to your dog. That is the absolute number one reason I say absolutely 100%. I will never, ever, ever recommend a board and train program to anyone hands down. And I won't even do a board and train program because even though I know that I only use force-free and positive reinforcement methods, you have absolutely no idea what's happening, what's going on with your dog. The second reason, biggest reason, to not take your dog to a board and train program is because your dog is going to act totally differently. They can be trained to do cartwheels. I'm not saying you should. I'm just an example. Your, tra your dog could be trained to do amazing tricks and things like that. When they get in your home and you're the one who's giving the cues to your dog, what incentive does your dog have to listen to you? Have you been trained to accurately provide those cues and learn the behavior and how to properly reward any behavior that your dog has been um, has achieved? Do you know at what point that cue is, okay, I need to reward it or no, they didn't quite do what I asked them to do or they didn't do it in the time frame they should have done it or they, maybe they provided two behaviors. You're not learning with your dog and that's the second most important reason why I say absolutely never board and train your dog. Um, so the second option is to take your dog to um, training classes. So you would actually go with your dog and you learn how to train with your dog. These are a pretty good idea. Um, they are absolutely nowhere near as bad as a board and train program because one, you get to learn alongside with your dog. You're actually the one cueing your dog and learning how and when to reward certain behaviors and actions that you're asking of your dog. Um, the other really great thing about taking your dog to a class is that your dog gets socialization with other dogs. And that's probably the absolute best thing about taking your dog to classes. Um, but you're, you know, you're learning probably in a group setting. So your dog is getting socialization with other dogs. Um, a downside to that is you're not getting all of the one-on-one -on -one attention. Another downside to that is that you have to work it in your schedule um, and not everybody is able to do that. Another downside to that is that you have to wait until a certain point when your dog has had all of their vaccinations. So they're a little bit older. They're not really in that like, I'm absorbing everything mode. They're, they're starting to get into um, their, ah, I've figured out I can, you know, get away with this, I can do that, and I can get, you know, I can get one over uh, on, you know, get what I want here. So they're already starting to learn all these different things. Um, so you're having to wait until they're a certain age, and that's not the worst thing in the world, but you are missing out on some of those really important, um, if you have a puppy, you're, you're missing out on some of those weeks when your dog is, um, more primed, I guess, to, to learn. Um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is online dog training. So you're actually learning from someone, um, who has provided their knowledge in a format that you can access online. Um, this is a, a really good, uh, way to actually get down and dirty, get in there and learn the techniques and exactly what you need to do to train your dog on certain cues that you want, 
um, on just all around keeping their uh, behavior the, and creating and molding the dog that you want. And one of the reasons that I think this is a really good option for a lot of people, um, one, you can do it on your schedule anytime. Two, you're learning before you teach. So you're learning what it is you need to do basically in a one-on-one -on -one format because most online, most of anything you learn online, you have interaction. You have the opportunity to interact with um, the trainer. Whoever's teaching whatever course it is, you have opportunity to interact with that person and actually get feedback one-on-one -on -one with what you're specifically doing, what you're learning, how you're learning it. So that's really great. And um, the other thing is, you know, I mean, you get to do it on your time. So if you, you know, work the late shift or you work a super early shift or, you know, you've got kids you're also taking care of and you maybe have, you know, baseball games or football games that you have to go to and attend to, you can still take that time with your dog and it may be at nine o'clock at night when no trainer has any classes available. Totally understandable. Maybe at nine o'clock at night, it may be at one o'clock in the morning you have access to all of that knowledge and all of that training so that you can actually get in there and learn it. Learn how you're supposed to train and then get in there and do it with your dog one-on-one. -on -one. And again, when you are training your dog and someone else is not someone else training your dog, but you are training your dog and you're, you're learning how to train and learning how to train your dog. Um, your dog is responding to you and you're adjusting your behavior and the in knowing what you expect and that is what makes or breaks a training with any dog training if you are not providing the the cue to your dog in the same way another trainer did they may not have any idea what you're wanting them to do so when you're the one doing it that is the best thing for the relationship between you and your dog. Um, another thing that I did want to mention, a lot of people uh, say they prefer going somewhere and taking classes, group classes, to learn um, or, you know, to do dog training. Again, there's that socialization aspect, but you also, um, what was I going to say? Oh my goodness, it just completely blew out of my head. <laughs> so you have that socialization aspect. Um, so I want to talk about that for a second. There are other really great ways of socializing. Okay, I remember it. There are other really great ways of socializing your dog. Um, there are meetup groups. Uh, you can just get online. Maybe your neighborhood has a Facebook group and or some other social media group and you can communicate with other people in your neighborhood to go for walks to have play dates with dogs there are, i know in in my neighborhood alone people are every week getting together and um socializing dogs or talking about their cats i mean there it's it's when people talk about their pets they are very passionate so you're really gonna be able to find very easily groups where you can take your dog and socialize them um, the other thing about training in a class versus training like at home is that when you train outside of your home, you have a lot of stimulus around you. Um, in the beginning, that's a bad thing. As you advance in your training, that's a good thing. Let me tell you what I mean. So when you start training anything, the every every client I have this is this is my advice and this is how I train I start at home very close contact just me or you and the dog and we train just us nothing else going on around us in our home environment so your dog is very comfortable um, there's not a lot of stimulus that your dog hasn't already checked out because you're in your home your dog's home um, for starting training, I think that's ideal. Going through as you get more advanced is not as ideal because the goal is we start, we start and make it as easy as possible for your dog because the goal is 
for your dog to get it right. So we want to, to set them up to win, right? So in order to do that, we need to start off making it as easy as possible for your dog to get and understand that behavior you want out of them. So starting at home, just you and your dog in your home environment is going to provide the least amount of stimulus and the least amount of distraction so your dog can get it right. Now, as your dog really starts to get, you know, to that 90, 95, 100% of getting that cue right every time you ask for it, then we want to start adding um, stimulus. We want to start adding distraction. We want to take it and go into different rooms of your home. We want to go outside, maybe in your backyard. We want to go out in places that are uh, more populated. Maybe there are other dogs, but we, we do that gradually so that we're setting our dogs up to win. We're setting our dogs up to, to get it right because that's what we both want, right? So as I was saying before, initially it's amazing. You absolutely would prefer to start in your home. As you get more advanced, it's really not that difficult. Again, going back to the meetup groups or maybe neighborhood groups, getting together, or, you know, just finding neighbors that have dogs. Um, or if you know, if you don't, or you you don't think you have neighbors that have dogs, or maybe you don't get along with your neighbors. I don't know. Go to meetup. Find meetup groups. There are tons of meetup groups. Of people that have dogs specific breeds of dogs or just I love dogs or rescue dogs. I mean, there are an infinite amount of groups out there that you can join and we can start to provide that stimulus to our dog, pro provide distraction along with a cue to our dog as our dog gets there, gets to that point where they can start taking in that extra stimulus or taking in a little bit of distraction and still getting it right and still getting that behavior down that you're asking them for. So that's, in my opinion, uh, I think the best way to train our dog is in home and then gradually adding uh, distraction and stimulus. So that's kind of my long-winded answer to <laughs> what's the difference and what's the best between training in home, training in you know group classes, and then board and train. Please, please, please don't board and train your dog. If I leave you with nothing else, please do not board and train your dog. Um, I offer online video dog training and I actually saw, let me check here, John was uh, with us earlier. He said, I'm learning so much from your videos. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, John. I really appreciate it. And JR is also with us. He's watching. Thanks so much for these videos. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Listen, if you are watching this video after the fact, meaning you're watching a recording, you're not necessarily watching live, still put your comments below. If you have questions, put them below. I would love to hear from you. Um, if you have an idea for a video, something specific, a specific question you have, you would really like me to answer, put that below too. I would love to see that and maybe I will do a video to answer your question. Don't forget, grab your copy of Seven Miracle Steps. The link is in the description. Um, you won't regret it. This book has my seven canine commandments really broken out in detail. Everything I teach all of my in-home clients, I can't tell you how many times I have gone to my very first session with a client. I've broken down all of the seven canine commandments to them. I have told them, put these in place in your home. They, they do it, right? They're paying me to be there to provide them with this knowledge. We go through, they put the seven canine commandments in place in their home. They call me up, you know, in a week, maybe a week and a half, and they're like, I cannot believe how much our home situation has changed. I am so happy with my dog's behavior. Um, we have worked through, you know, X, Y, Z. Specifically, I was recently talking to a group member. She got the book, she read it, she put everything in place. Her dogs were barking. She had three chihuahuas. Her dogs were barking incessantly. And she messaged me and she said, oh my gosh, Jessica, thank you so much. 
I put the methods, the seven canine commandments in place in my home. My dogs, I tell them thank you and they stop barking. It's amazing. I love getting these comments from people because my ultimate goal is to keep pets in their homes. Um, if they have a loving home, there is no reason why they shouldn't stay there. They should be in their forever home. Um, you know, minor behavioral issues shouldn't land them at the shelter, in my opinion, right? That's my goal. My ultimate goal is to keep families in their loving forever, to keep dogs in their loving forever homes. And this helps so much. I love getting your messages about it. Get the book. Let me know how it changes your life in your home. I would love to hear from you. Um, with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. If you have any questions about this video, about anything else, dog related, cat related, go ahead, post it in the comments. I love to hear your comments. With that, I'm going to end this video and I will see you guys later. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.